Meanwhile, the Cambridge Dictionary has changed the definition of a man and a woman. This is being done in order to include a third category, that is people who do not identify with the sex they were assigned at birth. Under the updated version, a man is now defined as an adult who lives and identifies as a male, though they may have had a different sex at birth. Meanwhile, a woman is now described as an adult who lives and identifies as a female despite having a different sex at birth. However, the long-standing descriptions are still there, which outlines that sex and gender go hand in hand. A spokesperson for the Cambridge Dictionary has said that the editors changed the definition of woman in October after carefully studying the usage patterns of the word woman and concluded that the latest description of how a female is defined should be used by the learners of English to further support their understanding of how the language is used. The new descriptions are now being criticized by social media users. Taking to Twitter, some users wrote, and I'm quoting here, Remember, if you can control the language, you can control the crowd. Another user wrote that the Cambridge Dictionary is only the latest, further saying that if we don't stop them from erasing women, our civilization is not going to make it. Meanwhile, the UK-based group Bristol, leading a campaign against transphobia, hailed the decision as a fantastic news. Andre, I'm back again. Back again. <laughs> yeah. And I want to ask you, how is it possible for men to be a lesbian? How is, it po lesbian? how is it possible for men to be a lesbian? <laughs> OK, so this, is, this story was all over the internet this week. There's a lesbian filmmaker and actress, Tonje <clears throat> Jevjon, who's facing up, up to three years in prison in Norway for saying that a man cannot be a lesbian. Now, this is an interesting... Leo, because you're... Are you a lesbian? <laughs> You've claimed, made that claim before, haven't yeah, you? I think men make the best lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> she's wrong about this. Uh, no, it's, it's interesting. She's, she's actually facing three years in jail yeah. just for saying that men can't be lesbians, which is kind of factually correct. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting how quickly the left went from supporting LGBT rights to incarcerating LGBT people for, for saying that they exist. Right, because this is a gay individual. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so this is... It's, it's sort of flipped to a, a kind of fantastic levels at this point, isn't it? Like jail time for saying something we all know to be true. Yeah, and uh, even by the, the rules of woke people, men can't be lesbians because, uh, like, the, basically, if, if, a, if a man or a biological male then says he's a woman, self-identifies as a woman, uh, then he's not a man anymore. That's right, they say then he's a woman, he's, so yeah. therefore he's a lesbian. Yeah, absolutely. So actually, this is violating rules on all sides of the cultural debate, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. This doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, the, the safe thing to do would not be to send this lesbian woman to jail for three years for, for saying it. How about we don't send anyone to jail for anything they say? That would be a good start, <laughs> wouldn't it? You know, that whole freedom of speech thing, you've got your First Amendment in America, it wouldn't happen there, would it? No, of course, nothing like this ever happens in America, no craziness. Uh, but I think, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's interesting that uh, Leo, is, is talking about this dressed as uh, Hugh Hefner. Yeah. Brent, Sarah, this lawsuit was filed on behalf of four former high school athletes who claimed that they missed out on wins and scholarship opportunities because they had to compete against two transgender athletes. Today's decision affirmed a lower court's dismissal of the case, saying that those claims were speculative. After years of legal back and forth, a federal appeals court has dismissed a lawsuit that claimed Connecticut's policy on transgender athletes is unfair to other students. I really hope that this victory will help us ensure that no student in Connecticut is denied opportunities because of who they are. Four cisgender female athletes claimed they were robbed of opportunities for wins, titles, and scholarships because they had to compete against two transgender girls in track and field. The CIAC's policy states that students can compete on the athletic teams of the gender they identify with. The court got it wrong. Our clients deserve the right to compete in competition fairly, and that just does not happen when you allow biological males to come in and to dominate women's sports. Alliance Defending Freedom represented the plaintiffs. Selena Sewell, Chelsea Mitchell, Alana Smith, and Ashley Nicoletti. They argued that their rights under Title IX were being violated. This is all about fairness for female athletes. The whole point of Title IX was to protect the integrity of women's sports for girls like my clients, and it's disappointing that the court failed to see that. The court rejected the argument, saying they lacked standing, and the students did have opportunities for state titles and had come in first place at various events, sometimes even against the transgender athletes. 
In a statement, the CIAC said it was confident in its inclusionary policies from the onset of this case and that it's pleased with the decision. The two transgender athletes at the center of this case, Andrea Yearwood and Terry Miller, were represented by the ACLU, who says this is a win for all trans students in the state. This really is a glimmer of hope um, in an otherwise pretty difficult time if you're a trans kid growing up in the United States right now. Um, this decision says that, you know, if you're a girl in math class, you're a girl in the track field and you don't have to pretend to be someone that you're not. And all of the student athletes involved in this case have since graduated high school. The Alliance Defending Freedom said that it is explore exploring all legal options, including an appeal. In the studio, Gabby Molina, Fox News. Folks, racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, transphobia, they're all connected. Oh. But the antidote to hate is love. Ah. This law and the love it defends mm -hmm. strike a blow against hate in all its forms. The law and the love it defends. What is he talking about? Well, there's a new law. Cut six. When hospitals, libraries, and community centers are threatened and intimidated, <laughs> excuse me, because they support... LGBTQ ch children and families, we have to speak out. We must stop the hate and violence, mm. like we just saw in Colorado Springs, mm. where a place of acceptance and celebration was targeted for violence and terror. We need to challenge the hundreds of callous, cynical laws introduced in the states targeting transgender children, terrifying families, and criminalizing doctors who okay. give children the care they need. We have to protect these children so they know they are loved and we will stand up for them and say I can seek for themselves. Stop. So he wants to show that we love these children and we must protect these children. Today, I declare that what I told you, the world would be upside down. Everything you thought would be solid will be liquid. Uh, everything that was liquid will be solid and you won't understand it. Today is the day, I declare, it is finished. When the president can say, this is for the love and protection of our children, so doctors can go in and mutilate our children, it is officially upside down.